Hi, welcome to this first look at a couple of new raw processing tools. We're going to take a look at the user interface for MacFun Luminar and On One Photo Raw 2017. So let me come over here. Let's start with Luminar and let me launch that. I've got a few demo images that I've loaded up in here. So let's go with this one. I've kind of playing around with a combination of portraits and landscapes since I like my portraits and my travel photography. Okay, so while this is loading up, let me tell you a little about the system. This is a 2014 iMac 5K running a solid state drive, which is where the applications, the desktop, and basically everything we're running is going to be off the solid state drive. I've got a RAID array attached to it, but that's not part of the mixture since this is on my desktop. So I chose this image because it's got a lot of problems with it. It's part of a bracket that I was using for HDR, but you can see I've got uh, some noise on here. It's, it's very dark over here on the side. And it gives us a good excuse to kind of look through the user interface. So let's start with the top up here. This little eyeball is kind of like your preview on and off. And then this would be your before and after view. You can see, let's jump over to the far right corner. This one that's selected is showing this column of uh, filters over here. We can turn that on and off. And this one, of course, will show the presets. There are a number of presets that are available with both products. And you can kind of click on this and choose a category of which preset that you want or maybe if you've got some favorites or for a particular user, there's go ahead and click in more and it'll go ahead and launch into what should be coming soon. More presets available from the Mac fun side. So let's get rid of that. And I'm going to turn off the presets. I kind of like having my image in there and just, just a little bit bigger. The more that you put on the user interface, the smaller your image gets to me, it's kind of harder to work with, but, the next thing I want you to take a look at is, despite the fact we've got some layers over here, and if you've worked with Photoshop and you've worked with layers, you know that you can do some adjustments on one layer, then add another layer and do other adjustments. This one will allow you to create layers that are a new adjustment layer or a new image. So for example, if we didn't like this sky, we could add a new image with a different sky into it, and then maybe put on a gradient and just kind of replace the sky very quickly and easily. I'll be honest with you, I don't know what a create new stamped layer is, so I'm going to just plead the fifth and skip right over that. Your workspace, however, defines the collection of filters that you have here. So the default workspace has some over here, black and white. You'll see it'll change it around and it'll, you may have some of the same filters in different workspaces, but the idea behind the workspaces is to get the stuff that you don't need out of your way and put the things that you are planning on using in, in front of you and make it easy to use. So in other words, this list isn't as long as every filter that's available. I'm going to go back to the default list. You want to add another filter. There's a plus sign up here or an add filter down here. And right now we've got all selected. There's a little sample photo with each one that kind of shows you what they do. So we'll just kind of scroll down a little bit and get, let you take a quick look. It doesn't show on your photo, but there is a very long list of potential in here. And these are things that I really kind of enjoy. Some of them I've, I'm gonna have to start marking my favorites on here. So for example, this split color warmth, I really like. So if you've got a, an area of sky that needs to be cool and you've got a warm area below, that it really helps kind of enhance those colors and, and draw them out. You could do that with uh, hue, saturation, and luminance, but this is just easy. It's two sliders. You go in there and slide cooler, warmer, and you do that for each one. It, it just really helps you to make a fast and easy change. It doesn't matter what's going on behind the scenes. If you could have done it with another tool, the trick is you can do it quickly. Now, you've got under tone, this little thing for smart tone, which is kind of like their own little version of how would I tone this image? It's usually for Luminar, this is the thing I'm going to use first, just to see what it does. You don't have anything similar to that with uh, on one raw, photo raw. One thing I really like about the Adobe products with whether it's either the Lightroom develop module or Adobe camera raw is you can hold down the shift key, which I'm doing. And then you can kind of double click, you know, your whites and shadows, and it will set it to your black point and your white point. And it'll give you its automatic setting of what it thinks each of these should be. Neither of these products work that way. If you hold down the shift key and you hit blacks, all you're really doing is you're moving your blacks over to the point where you clicked. Now you can double click the name and it will reset it back to the central mark. But some of the features that you may have been used to with Adobe products aren't going to work here. Okay, let's jump over to the side. This is going to be for your global adjustments. You do have a masking brush. Now you can mask on the layer or you can actually mask on a filter. And same thing, you have a gradient 
which right now isn't going to do me much good because I haven't made any changes. You also have a radial filter over here. This is your transform tool, your clone stamp tool. This is your eraser, or basically it, what you might think of as your kind of your healing brush. Let me cancel these changes over here since I did not do anything. And it, it, with Luminar, it needs to prepare in advance. So before you do anything, you're going to go ahead and make your changes. And I've got some dust spots over here, so I'll just kind of click on those. And if I were smart, I'd probably zoom in and, and size this a little bit better. But let me just go ahead and fudge this as I'm going along. And you can make a number of changes. And then when you're ready, go ahead and hit apply. It'll go ahead and process all of those. When it gets done with this and it goes back, you're going to notice that you have a new layer. You know what? I probably should have gone doing some of these little floating things down here in the water. Little buoys and what have you. Okay, so now I have an erased layer image, which if you turn that turn the eyeball off, you'll see those little marks will come back. And also I've kind of cleared off on my workspace. So let's go back to the default and it'll bring all that back. This is your denoise, the little uh, it almost looks like a gradient with specs, but that's kind of like your noise as it's drawing. And of course, this will be your crop tool, depending on what you want to do with that. And you can retransform or go with some of the uh, usual settings that we've got. I'm not going to do that, so let me cancel that out. And that is a quick overview of what you should expect to see in Luminar. I want to go ahead and quit this. And don't save anything there. And now we're going to go ahead and take a look at On One Photo Raw 2017. Now, one thing I want to warn you about with On One Photo Raw is the time I'm recording this is not yet a complete product. They're shipping a pre-release, and then on December 19th, 2016, that is the release date for the final product. So some of the things simply aren't going to be available to you yet. Let's go ahead and choose this one. It looks like I've already made some edits on there. And we'll go ahead out of the browsing module and hit the develop module. And... It's looking at changes I've already made. I think I'm going to go ahead and reset this back. So some of the things that aren't available yet, if up at the top over here, you see the info that's showing, you know, what camera I used, what settings I had. But the histogram, the loop, and the nav are just going to say coming soon. So they aren't quite ready for prime time yet. I expect that those will be ready December 19th, along with a couple of other things. Uh, one of the things I noticed is that it on one photo raw does not yet work fully with my Wacom Intuos 5 pad. So let's uh, let's go back and reset everything here. And that's as it shipped. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And I've got the hand. You'd think that I'd be able to move that. I hold down the space bar. I'd be able to move it. I'm right clicking on my pen with my Wacom uh, tablet and nothing. However, I come over here and I've got an Apple mouse. So I'm going to turn that on. You can see where it's connected down there. I'll hold, the, hold down the uh, mouse button and click, and everything's working fine. So it's not that it doesn't work. It works fine on my MacBook Pro using the touchpad. It works fine here with my Magic Mouse. But for whatever reason, it does not yet like my Intuos 5 for moving. And I've tried, you know, you can see I'm kind of scrolling around over here with the zoom button. And let's see if I can find anything that... It just doesn't want to work. I'm holding down the the pen button. Actually, both of them, just in case. And it's it's not working properly with my Wacom tablet. So that is uh, something that I hope is corrected in the pre-release. The settings over here are a little bit different. You've got your overall settings and your local adjustments. And you don't necessarily have workspaces as you did with Luminar. But you always have your tone and color. So you can add more things. If you click over here where it says Show Me... And these are the settings that you have to be able to add in the develop area. This is not the extent of what you can add to finish your photo. Once you're done with this, you get rid of that. I'm going to hit auto, see what it does. A little bit of what I like, but let me go ahead and see. I'm going to pull the highlights all the way up. And one of the things I, I was a little disappointed in at first was this area over here off to the left side where there's a, a bit of a cliff and some greenery. Just nothing came out of that from... Actually, that wasn't the highlights I meant to bring up. You know, I'm being silly with my work. I want to bring the shadows all the way up. So it brings it out a little. It does not bring it out as much as I got in the uh, product with Luminar. However, I can go over to local adjustments, and you've got some options here, and then this pull-down shows you even more. I'm going to choose Lighten. 
and come over here and brush. Actually, it might help if I actually clicked it properly. And then the detail is still in there. So I'm, I'm doing a, kind of a halfway job of doing my brushing, but all the detail is still in there. What that teaches me is that both products will do the work that you want to do, but you may have to use different tools between them to achieve the same effect. I wanted to open up this area with Luminar, pulling up the uh, shadows did it for me with, uh, with raw. I need to go over there and just do it with the exposure and the light and mode of it. So same, same problem, different solution to the result, but you can certainly take care of it. Let me go back to your overall setting. So as I said, we've got these options over here for basically your development. Then after that, you want to go through and finish the product. That's where you click over to your effects and you can click on add filter and you've got a much longer list of what you can add over here. Both products have a glow. Both products have, you know, some sort of dynamic contrast, sharpening, noise reduction. But there are things that each product has that the other one lacks. So, for example, this one has a lens flare and there are a number of options and you can kind of see how it affects your photo. And don't uh, if, if some of these look a little garish to you, don't worry about that because I'm not playing with the other settings. I'm not changing the opacity. Each uh, each filter is going to have its own little gear icon over here. We can kind of change the blend modes and and other factors to kind of tweak how those things look. So you're going you're to have options over here. One of the things I liked on Luminar was it had a foliage filter, which if I put that over here on the greenery, really kind of subtly enhanced just the greens that it didn't affect the rest of the uh, tool. But this one, you know, for portraits has skin retouching, which actually works kind of nicely well. It does have a bit of a global impact on the photo I discovered, but it was very easy to kind of mask out, you know, the rest of the photo and just have the skin retouching where I wanted it to be. It's... I, I, it works. It doesn't work quite the way that I initially anticipated it to. So I think that's going to be something that it may change until we see the final version on December 19th, or it may be that I need to change the way I think about doing my workflow. But that's okay. Both of them so far are letting me do things that I have really not been able to do. I'm getting stronger, sharper results I basically than what I would get just out of Lightroom Develop Module or with... Um, Adobe Camera Raw. And both of them have layers. Both of them will continue to grow. I know MacFun has said that they expect to have more coming from their product, probably a photo browser, much like if we click on the browse menu over here. This is just a folder on my desktop. And as you go to other areas, you can kind of browse without having to go into Lightroom. Both products will work in as plugins with Lightroom, with Photoshop, with Aperture and uh, Apple Photos, I believe. So, that is just kind of a quick look. Also keep in mind with On One Photo Raw, you get more than just the develop module and the effects. When you look in uh, your plugins in Lightroom or in Photoshop, you're still gonna see the portrait module that was in previous On One versions. It's, these products have kind of been built up again from the ground up, and it's definitely running much faster than previous versions of On One. Luminar is its own beast. It's kind of a new thing. I'm enjoying both of them very much, and I kind of wanted to give you a look at how they operate. So I hope this has been helpful for you. Thanks very much. My name is William Beam, and you can find me at williambeam.com.